Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, I've had a lot of people asking for an update on my Brachypelma species. Back in November of 2018, I did my Brachypelma blowout where I covered all the ones I had. And unfortunately, a lot of them were slings, not showing a lot of the vibrant colors that they're known for as an adult. Well, it's been obviously a couple years and now some of them are looking like young adults and showing off some of those colors. So I figured it's time for an update. So what we're gonna do here is kind of a 4K Brocky Pelma blowout part two. Now I'm not gonna go into the individual husbandry for each of these guys like I did in the last video. I will link to that video. Plus I do believe I have a bunch of individual husbandry videos for them. But this is just sort of to show what I've seen as far as their looks, their growth rate, and the behaviors. Now one of the reasons why these guys are so popular is the fact that many species make it on the beginners list because they are rather hardy spiders and many of them are very docile and laid back as adults. And as you'll see here, some of mine not quite so much, but it doesn't matter because they're still amazing looking spiders nonetheless. Now I don't have every single Brachypelma species. Every time I do one of these videos, somebody will come on and say, how do you not have this one? But I'm working on it. So know that by the time I give it all up, I will hopefully have kept every single species of Brachypelma. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at some hopefully beautiful images of Brachypelma species. All right, to kick this one off, we have my very speedy and shy Brachypelma Amelia, or Mexican reg leg. As you can see here, she immediately bolts to her burrow. I had to entice her out with some food because she is a, quite the shy little girl. Now, I got this one in March of 2020 as about a one-inch sling, and she's molted about three or four times in my care. Right now, she's about three inches, and as you can see there, she's starting to show off those adult colors. These guys are quite the lookers when they get older, and quite frankly, I'm almost embarrassed that I only got my first bee, Amelia, a couple of years ago because this one's kind of one of the hobby staples that everybody should have at one point. Now, as far as some of her behaviors, she has continued to burrow even as she put on side while some of my other Brachypelma species tend to abandon their burrows after a while. And as you saw in the beginning of this video, she doesn't hesitate to run and hide in that burrow when disturbed. Now, the good news is she hasn't been much of a hair kicker for me, which is nice because nobody wants to get hit with those hairs. Now, as adults, these guys are supposedly very docile. Many talk about having tractable adult specimens that will tolerate handling, but as always, you have to keep in mind that the temperament can vary from spider to spider and species to species. Now, on a personal note, I don't know why I didn't have one of these early on. I think part of the problem was I knew they would take a while to grow up as slings, and when I'd see little slings offered, I would just be too impatient for it. So I should have got one a long time ago, but I'm glad that I finally have one of these beautiful tarantulas to raise up. And just a note on the coloring here. Obviously, this is a younger specimen, so you can see those femurs will eventually darken up to a more black coloration, a darker coloration, which will really make those reddish legs pop. Next up, we have my Brachypelma auratum, or Mexican flame knee, and this happens to be one of the only tarantulas in my collection. Not one of the only, there's a lot more now, but I'm not big on naming them. They have to do something special to get named, but this one here is named Autumn because of the fact that the colors remind me of Autumn and of Halloween. I don't know, when the first time I saw a picture of one of these, it just screamed Halloween to me. And I think it's because most of it is black except for those bright orange markings on the knees, so this is definitely a personal favorite of mine. I got her in October of 2014 as a tiny 0.3 inch sling and she's always been kind of quirky a little spunky girl now this one has been a very slow grower she is now only about 4.5 inches or so and she's quite wily in the fact that she's doesn't like when she's disturbed she will kick hairs as you can see there her abdomen is bald and she'll also bolt around her enclosure she's one of the only spiders I've ever had bolt almost up and out of the enclosure usually they go down but she will bolt around Unlike the B. Amelia earlier, she burrowed earlier on, but then gave up her burrow probably when she hit around an inch and a half or so. And even given space to burrow in this enclosure here and given a hide, she never uses it. Now, despite her skittishness and the fact that she will kick hairs, I absolutely adore her. And I can't wait till she molts again and gets the hair back on that bald spot because it's just so unsightly for such a beautiful girl. And here we have my Brachypelma hemorii, or Mexican red knee. 
I had this girl for a long time. I actually, one of the few spiders I picked up as a sexed juvenile, and I got her in November of 2012. And at the time, she was about three inches or so, so she was already showing her adult colors. Well, I was hoping I would have a big, beefy brachypelma at the time. She was smithy by now, but she has been an incredibly slow grower for me, molting only three times in my care. She is now about four and a half inches. I don't think she's a full five inches now. Beautiful spider nonetheless. And as you can see here in the close-up, a little... I don't want to say washed out, but not as vibrant and vivid as some of the specimens you see, but still striking nonetheless. Now, a lot of people are confused over the difference between Hemorii and Smithy. Hemorii generally are the less vibrant of the two, and the orange that they have, you see there, the orange on the knees doesn't extend past the patella, where in the Smithy, it'll extend down to the next leg segment, and we will see a Smithy in a minute. Fortunately, it's so young, it's not showing all those colors yet, but I absolutely adore this spider, and Again, I've shared stories before that when I was a kid, the first real live spider I ever saw was a Brachypelma smithy. Well, at the time, it was probably Ulathless smithy, and it was the middle of a pet store that my father brought me to, and that obviously had a profound effect on me. And since then, it's one of the spiders that appears in a lot of movies and television shows. I was just watching The Beyond by Lucio Fulci, a horror movie the other day, and there was a couple Bee Smithies in it. It was, I mean, Behemorii, it was absolutely hilarious the scene in it because it was terrible but that was what I was exposed to growing up and luckily that didn't taint me any as far as liking these animals or wanting to have these animals it just made me more and more fascinated with them now as far as this girl's temperament is concerned as a when I got her as a juvenile she was quite skittish and would not hesitate to kick hairs I'm happy to report that now that I've had her for a little while she's calmed down a great deal and I don't get a lot of the hair kicking as you can see there, this is probably about three months after her last molt and all of the hair is still on her abdomen. She has not been kicking. She has also started to calm down a bit, which has been neat to see. I think one of the big issues with the Brachypelma hemorii and the Brachypelma smithy is the fact that folks hear so much about them being great beginner spiders that they're a little bit shocked when they get the smaller specimens and they're racing around their tanks and they're kicking hairs. It can be a little upsetting. Do know that they tend to grow out of it. And I have seen that from molt to molt, this girl seems to be getting more and more laid back and docile which is great because she's one I just love to look at because when I first started the hobby years ago this was the one I was aiming for and again normally don't buy sexed specimens but in this case I just couldn't wait I had read how long they took to grow up and I needed to have one now so beautiful spiders and definitely ones that are still hobby staples and very much worth keeping if and finding if you don't have one. And here we have the Brachypelma smithy, or the again, the Mexican red leg. This is why the common names can be kind of confusing, but looks very similar to the Hamorii. The funny thing about this one is if you'll notice, the fiery orange is only on really one or two knees right now. The rest of it isn't coming out, but you see beautiful spiders as I zoom in here. This one's eating a nice, fat B. lateralis roach. It was the only way I could get her to sit still. Again, as slings, these guys were a bit skittish, did a little bit of hair kicking, but now that I've got them both rehoused in a larger, a larger enclosures, they seem to be calming down a bit. Now, I got mine back in the fall of 2018, and at the time, they were one-inch slings. They are now about two and a half inches or so, and obviously showing some adult colors, and those adult colors will continue to intensify as they put on size. Now, when smaller, they did do a little bit of burrowing as slings, but now they are right out in the open, and although I've given them plenty of room to hide, and both of them have cork bark hides in there, none of them are using it. But it would be worth it to mention that, again, like the aforementioned Brachypelma hemorii, these guys can be a little bit skittish earlier on. So again, it doesn't matter which one you get. Expect that you could get some skittish, some flighty behavior, but a lot of people I talk to say that those theirs have calmed down after they put on some size, and once again, the adults are generally much more laid back.
Now, as far as which one to get, who knows? It's a toss-up. It's funny because I hear a lot of folks that freak out because they're looking for the real B. Smithy because that's the one they saw in movies and in shows growing up. But I can tell you right now that going back and watching some of those again, the spiders that are featured are actually the B. Hamorii. So if you're looking for the hobby classic right now, although you may be more familiar with the name B. Smithy, the Hamorii more often than not are the ones that were sold in the hobby under the name B. Smithy back in the days. And those were the ones that are featured in the movies. So a little trivia. And bottom line, they look so similar that honestly, if you can only get one, either one of them will suffice. I planned on basically showing these guys off when they got older to show the differences. So therefore, I wanted to have both specimens. And I'm kind of a completist, so I am trying to get all the Brachypelma species. So I did get both of them, but it's not needed. So if you get one, don't panic. The one big thing I've encountered lately is people end up buying the Brachypelma smithy. They look at the juveniles. The colors aren't popping the way they think they should. And then they immediately think the dealer didn't give them the right spider. Let's give them a chance to grow up. I believe a lot of these are imported legally from Mexico right now where they actually pull them from the wild. They raise them and they sell part of them into the trade. They put the rest of them back into the wild. So they should know which species they have. So I wouldn't be too concerned that I have the wrong one. Now, right here, we have my Brachypelma Boime or Mexican fire leg. I will tell you that later on in the video, because I couldn't get a lot of footage of this beautiful, vibrant girl here, I do have some footage of my adult female Brachypelma Boime and probably Baumgartney hybrid. The Baumgartney is a less vivid version of the spider, but I do want to make that clear. Anyway, this here is my Boime Mexican fire leg. Beautiful, beautiful spider. I got mine as a half inch sling in September of 2016. And and she's been one of the faster growing species of Brachypelma I had. She actually outgrew the B. Classy that we'll be seeing later on in terms of you know putting on the adult size and getting her adult coloration early. I have two of this species. Both are very, very skittish and are prone to bolting and kicking hairs with the slightest disturbance. Now, I know there are folks out there that will say that they have calm ones. I completely believe them. And remember, the temperament of spiders can differ from specimen to specimen. But I've also heard from a lot of folks that do report that their boimies are quite high strung. So that's something to keep in mind and what kind of keeps these guys off of the beginner species list. I've had people before where I've done the beginner species list freak out because the species isn't on there. The speed, the skittishness, and its propensity to kick hairs are what sometimes keeps it off of that list. As you can see this one here, her booty is already kind of bald from doing, bald from doing a little bit of kicking. Now, the hairs, just a note, I've been haired by one of these guys a while ago, and the hairs were fairly nasty for a Brachypelma species, and I've also spoken to others that say that the hairs from this species are pretty bad, so a heads up there. Remember, a lot of folks think it's about the bite, but you don't want to ignore the hairs. You can prevent being haired by being careful, by putting on rubber gloves, by keeping your sleeves down. So I don't want people panicking when we talk about the hairs here, but do know that it is a possibility that they could kick. Now, mine is a sling burrowed a bit, and both of mine actually liked a little moisture. I think a lot of times we hear the Brachypelma species, they come from Mexico, they come from more arid regions, and we think that we should keep the slings bone dry. I have not found that to be the case. I found that slings do appreciate a little moisture, but you don't want to overdo it. However, as mine put on more size, I didn't worry about keeping part of the tank moist. I would just give them a nice big water dish, which I have seen them drink before, and keep the rest of the substrate dry. Now, the spider that we're looking at here is my Brachypelma Baumgartney uh, Boimi hybrid that I mentioned earlier, at least suspected to be a hybrid. So unfortunately, she will not be bred because I don't want to take the chance of spreading the mixed genes. But the Baumgartney's common name is Mexican Orange Beauty. So she's kind of a Mexican Orange Beauty. And we call her Lazarus due to the fact that she had a near-death experience. So I got her in the winter of 2013 as a four-inch sexed female. And unfortunately, the heat pack failed and she was partially frozen. We thought she was dead. And as I went in there, the poker with a brush, she sprang to life, came back to life, scuttled around the aquarium, scared the heck out of me. And then after two molts, she was completely fine. And she had obviously frozen on part of her abdomen because after the first molt, there was actually a misshapen area where it almost looked like somebody took a chunk out of her. That was probably due to the frostbite. And fortunately, she was able to repair that. She's been perfectly fine for years. 
She is now around five inches or so, so an adult, and she is still, she just molted. She is still quite skittish. I was glad that I was able to get her out in the open eating here because every time I open up this enclosure, she is one that runs immediately to her den, which is a cork bark round, and you will see at the end of this video, after she gets a little sick of being under the lights and me filming her, she turns around and heads toward her hide, but a beautiful spider, one of my favorites in my collection. Again, there aren't many spiders I have right now that are named and she has definitely earned that name. My kids always ask about her because they were there that day that we opened up her box and we thought she was dead and they always want to know how she's doing. She's doing great and easily one of the most beautiful spiders that I keep. And finally, we have probably one of the greatest surprises I have ever received as far as growing up a spider, my Brachypelma Classy or Mexican Pink or Mexican Pink Beauty. Every once in a while, you discover a spider that just amazes you with its looks, and this is definitely one of them. She just molted about a month ago, and my gosh, is she stunning. I got this one actually as a freebie in September of 2016, and at the time, she was about a half inch or 1.25 centimeters, tiny little sling. She is now four inches plus, and just look at her, stunning. And you can see where they get the name Mexican Pink Beauty, because if you look at the legs, they have almost this pinkish tones where the other spiders from Mexico tend to have those fiery oranges and reds and some yellows. This one does have that overall pink appearance, and I think it makes her look even more striking. So again, talk about a pleasant surprise. When I got this one, I was just starting to reach out and try to grab all the Brachypelma species I could find, and I honestly didn't know what an amazing spider I had until very recently. Now, as a sling and juvenile, she was very skittish. She would often run around the enclosure if disturbed or run to her burrow when she was smaller. As a sling at the time, I was keeping her in one of those AMAC boxes, about two and a half by two and a half by four or so tall. And she did a lot of burrowing when I moved her as a juvenile into her newer closure. She did a little bit of burrowing, but then eventually gave it up. But she was a little skittish when she was caught out in the open. Now that she's a young adult, she has actually calmed down quite a bit. And I love it because I love just taking her out, opening the enclosure, and kind of just watching her a bit. Before I filmed this footage, I had her out and was just taking pictures of her. And she just sat there being so photogenic. It's funny because I have several spiders in my collection that I bought, not so much on a whim, but was more like trying them out, seeing if how I liked them, if they excited me, and they became some of the favorite spiders I have in my collection, and this girl is definitely one of them. Just an amazing, beautiful animal. Now, this is a very slow-growing species, so for folks that are interested, if you see slings out there, and usually every once in a while you see the tiny slings offered, I know they can be intimidating, but they are totally worth it because, again, look at this girl right here. She's stunning, so if you want one, you see those babies out, and maybe you haven't tried your first slings yet, I would encourage you to give them a try. They are hardy spiders and definitely worth the effort. So there was one species I did leave out of this video. Back in the day, I did pick up a Brachypelma albiceps sling that unfortunately grew up to be a T. Voggins. I got the wrong animal. Really upset about that because I really wanted albiceps. Recently, I picked up a couple slings. And as you can see here, they're growing, but still quite tiny. So we might have to wait for the next Brachypelma blowout to show what these guys look like as adults. And a word on growth rate. I have heard from some people that keep theirs at 80 degrees or higher all year round. If you do, you're going to see faster growth rates. And I've also noticed that it can take a while for them to get from a quarter of an inch to the one inch size. That seems to be where they grow the slowest. But once they hit that one inch mark, most of them seem to put on some decent size. And as far as temperament's concerned, just be wary of the fact that although one person may report that they have a very docile one, another person may have one that's a little more high strung that can be bolting around kicking hair. So just pay attention to that if you pick one of these up. And don't assume just because the, that person has a tame one that yours is going to be tame. Always keep that in the back of your mind. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in here. I'm going to put the old Brocky Pelma blowout in here so people that want to see these guys when they're a little younger can check it out. I'll probably put best for viewer up here. As always, if you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of them. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.